Greetings, friends and neighbors, and welcome to episode 23 of the Community Solutions Podcast, coming to you from the students, faculty, staff, and community partners affiliated with the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences at the Indiana University Fairbanks School of Public Health in beautiful downtown Indianapolis. I am Jack Terman, Jr., your host for the podcast and a member of the faculty in this great department. This season, our students lead discussions about books they have read, all of which have pieces of wisdom to share about building and sustaining healthy, hope-filled communities. Many students are having discussions about the importance of using thoughtful, empowering communication strategies to build communities. Today, our students Claire, Jill, and Sierra have a conversation about the book The World Cafe by Dr. Juanita Brown and David Isaacs. This discussion is so important for individuals who have to lead constructive, meaningful conversation among a large group of people. This is a vital reality for any community development effort. However, we all recognize that this can be challenging for a community leader as the leader has to respect and navigate the multiple opinions that will come to the conversation and honor the diverse backgrounds of individuals who contribute to the large dialogue. I love how Claire, Jill, and Sierra emphasize the idea of cafe when preparing to lead and have these large conversations. It's important to create a comfortable, welcoming environment when people feel like they are coming to a peaceful cafe to have a chat, share ideas, and develop relationships that can work to solve community issues. They all do a great and wonderful job of clearly outlining the simple steps that one can take to host a large community dialogue. So let's move forward and have a great day. Please share our podcast with others and please keep listening. Let's join the conversation. Hi, my name is Jillian. My name is Sierra. And my name is Claire, and we are here to talk about the book entitled The World Cafe by Dr. Juanita Brown and David Isaacs. David Isaacs is president for Clearing Communications, a leadership and strategy consultant agency. He's got experience working with people as a personal coach as they go through changes and transformations in their lives and in their organizations. He's also a co-founder for the World Cafe Community Foundation, an educational network for discussing community strategies. Claire, why don't you tell them more about Dr. Juanita Brown? Dr. Juanita Brown is the founder of Whole Systems Associates, an international consortium of professionals dedicated to strategic inquiry and renewal. Ms. Brown focuses in the areas of strategic thinking, strategic dialogue, multi-generational collaboration at work, leading learning organizations, building communities of commitment, and catalyzing large-scale systems change. David and Juanita both worked in their professional careers to provoke thoughtful conversation amongst business leaders to lead their organizations down a path of success. Working in these similar fields uh, and being passionate about meaningful dialogue motivated these authors to come together and establish the World Cafe process. So how I understood the World Cafe was that I understood the World Cafe to be a tool to create more meaningful conversations in large groups of people. Um, It is a way to embrace the diversity of a large group and use that as a strength in communication. That's interesting, Claire, that you thought more about the diversity and the, the group a large a group aspect of it. Um, I was really focusing on how the title World Cafe encompasses the idea that the, what the tool really is. So if you treat the whole world like it's your cafe where you can just sit for hours and brainstorm and talk and casually brainstorm with other people, you can come up with great ideas for change and improvement within either your community or organization. Sierra, that's kind of the same interpretation I got from reading the World Cafe. Uh, The relaxed environment of the World Cafe really enables people to think creatively. Uh, It gives everyone an equal opportunity to contribute to the conversation uh, the way that they feel most comfortable. So to me, the World Cafe is a way to reintroduce the power of good conversation as the core of organizational or community development. 
Okay, so let's talk about what sets the World Cafe process apart from other organized events. So the World Cafe has seven main principles that it follows. Um, the first one being setting the context. So reminding the group of people that you're discussing with um, what we're talking about, the goal or the mission behind the discussion, and explain the context in which the conversation is taking place in. Yeah, so in setting the context and everything, you're going to want to invite key stakeholders, um, individuals in the community where the health issues are being addressed, um, get their stories and input, and share their insights about the issue with the organizational leaders in a comfortable, comfortable conversation where everybody can come together and really brainstorm all these ideas. I think their strategy of sending out warm invitations for the cafe event to all stakeholders really makes the role of cafe stand out. Uh, nobody gets invitations in the mail anymore because everything's done online now. Uh, so there's something about receiving an invitation to an event in the mail that makes me feel a little bit more important and excited about the event. Uh, it's a little bit more sentimental to me. Yeah, so when we're creating that sentimental environment and making people feel more comfortable, we're going to move on to that second principle of creating a hospitable place. Which when you think about your local cafe, you're going to want people to feel comfortable and warm and friendly. So that's kind of the concept here of creating a hospitable place. Um, the next thing we really want to make sure that we're doing when we're having a World Cafe discussion is to create a welcoming environment for the dialogue to be had, um, giving people equal opportunity to voice their concerns and not turning organizations into dictatorships. For those introverts like myself, uh, the stiff business meetings with the hierarchy of bosses sitting around the table make me feel stressed and not comfortable enough to contribute to the conversation. Uh, that informal environment that the World Cafe has really pulls leaders and stakeholders out of the cold, uh, formal setting where most organizational decisions for change are made and welcomes everyone to be engaged and contribute to the conversation. Uh, so the World Cafe process really brings people together to explore questions that matter. Participants are invited to the World Cafe event were uh, chosen because the stakeholders, or they are stakeholders, to the issue or topic that the conversation will revolve around. The questions asked at the beginning of each round of conversation should explore topics that participants are most passionate about, uh, care, most to the, uh, care most about, and relate to the central issue that they're discussing. Framing these questions energize the participants to engage in conversation uh, collectively about something that they're interested in and drives the possibility of knowledge to be shared and new connections to be made. Yeah, so when we're looking at questions, uh, it's really good to ask strategic questions that are gonna provoke deep thought, uh, more discussion with people, asking further questions. Um, this is gonna enhance your dialogue, keep conversations going, and really increase thinking on the subject so that you can really just make a good brainstorming session out of all of this. I really like what you said, Sierra, about asking questions um, because that helps to encourage everyone's contribution. It's easy for people to become bystanders in a large group discussion. I think we've all seen this in group discussions in class, but encouraging participation is extremely important. Ultimately, you can't force someone to speak up, but you can ask them insightful questions and ask for their personal opinion on the discussion topic to get the conversation to include everyone in the group. Uh, something that really stood out to me uh, while reading was that the authors recognized that in group settings there are different personalities. Some are more comfortable uh, taking the lead in conversations and talking more while others may be more introverted and reserved, uh, more uh, prone to observe what's going on in the conversation and absorb the information rather than uh, actively participating. Isaacs and Brown created a way for everyone to contribute, not just through engaging in conversation verbally, but also by writing their ideas and thoughts down on the tablecloths and note cards, which still allowed them to feel comfortable contributing. Yeah, so Jill's talking about there's different personalities in group settings, and that's why it's important, as we talked about earlier, to create that warm, hospitable environment, but also to connect diverse perspectives. So we want to include everybody on the idea and the topic, make sure everybody's involved in the conversation. There is a line in the chat in this uh, chapter regarding the diverse perspectives about how as uh, people make new connections, uh, sparks of insight begin to emerge that no one would have been able to make on their own. Uh, sometimes uh, when I'm writing a paper for class, I think about you know 
all of the information that I have and the insight and perspectives I have for writing the paper, but I get to a point where I need to go out and talk to a family member or a friend about the topic that I'm writing about because I need to be able to bounce ideas off of them uh, and get their perspective and insight in order to make a connection about that topic that I wouldn't have been able to make on my own. The next principle that Isaacs and Brown uh, mentioned for the World Cafe is we need to listen together for patterns and insights. This is a holistic form of collective listening and it enables conversation to radiate outwards from a central point and it allows for a web to form of deeper insight or understanding of the issue to being addressed. As conversations unfold, this gathered attention invokes the deeper conversation and curiosities of the topic bringing about more in-depth uh, questions and a better understanding for the topic. A strategy the authors used in many cafe conversations that stood out to me with the most was the method of shared visual spaces. I like the idea of this because cafe conversations allows everybody to communicate and learn, not just verbally, but also see what's being written down and be able to absorb that information visually as well. Yeah, I'm definitely the visual learner, but um, also the person that just kind of sits back and takes in everything that's happening in a conversation. And having those people in your group is important so that they can come back at the end and say, you know, what I'm hearing a lot is this, and what we need to do is uh, tackle this issue. So having that person that can kind of be a third party almost just listening to what everybody has to say is really important. So the last um, main principle of the World Cafe is the importance of sharing collective discoveries. Um, at the end of the discussion, it's important to share what the collective conversation found or discovered. What were some of the topics that were consistently brought up? What were some of the novel or unique ideas presented? Um, one of the quotes from the book that I really enjoyed, um, it compared the World Cafe like a progressive dinner party of the mind. Um, for those of you who don't know, progressive dinners are where you're hosted or go to different homes or restaurants for each portion of a meal. Um, in my church community, we do a lot of progressive dinners, and I've found that the conversation usually evolves from one home to the next. It might start with, you know, an accomplishment or a piece of news with one family, and that news gets shared from house to house, from conversation to conversation, and the conversation is really enriched by that um, group discussion, that large group discussion. Um, I related to what Dr. Brown was saying when she compared um, the World Cafe to a progressive dinner. Um, the concept works the same regardless of what type of conversation is being held. The biggest takeaway that I took from this book and the discussion that we've had is the importance of diversity in conversations. I think it's easy, especially in the context of graduate school, to have conversations that are all going the same direction. We rarely talk about dissenting opinions or opposition to our ideas aside from acknowledging them as a barrier. I think it's important moving forward that when we have discussions about community initiatives or creating change that we try and look at the issue from all angles. And I think it would be worthwhile to practice this. I think I would benefit from participating in a large community forum where my views and opinions may not be aligned with the majority of those in attendance. I agree with that, Claire. I think it's also important to note that there's uh, a leader for each small group who is in control uh, so that everyone's perspective and uh, voice is taken into consideration without prejudice and it makes everyone feel comfortable sharing the ideas but that way uh, nobody carries the conversation and it's not one-sided. The biggest takeaway uh, I got from reading this book is that it taught me that in order to move an entity forward, whether it's being uh, a community, an organization, or a small business, it starts with good conversation that enables everyone involved in an opportunity to con uh, contribute their input. The cafe setting removes that formality and sense of hierarchy so that everyone feels equal and welcome to share their insights, diverse perspectives, and curiosities that they may not have felt comfortable sharing in like a boardroom in a big uh, corporate uh, business. Yeah, I think for me, what I took away was pretty much the same that you guys did, um, making the whole world into just a networking discussion option where you can really have great uh, conversations with just about anybody, but also taking into what you took, said, Claire, about having different angles and different um, diverse opinions about things. I know 
I was in a meeting the other day and I wasn't even really originally supposed to be at this meeting, but the fact that I was at this meeting um, really helped the people who were trying to design a tool for undergrad students because the people that were designing the tool were all uh, probably over the age of 50. And so to have somebody that was closer to the age that would be using this uh, tool that they were creating, it helped them to figure out what they needed to implement and what they were missing um, from their design. So it's definitely important in any situation to have those uh, people with the diverse background, um, different opinions and things like that. Absolutely. I really like what you said, Sierra, especially about the different age groups. Um, bringing in more stakeholders and brains to the table for a diverse conversation can improve the quality of resources being provided. In a healthcare organization, this could mean bringing in residents as well as specialists in different fields to your cafe dialogue, and that will bring up different perspectives and ideas on problems and solutions for the community and for the organization. That's really great, Claire. Well, that's all we have time for today, folks. Thanks for listening, and please make sure to share our podcast with your friends, and don't forget to turn your world into a cafe.